Hi, this is Malcolm Groves. This is part one of a few videos that I'm doing covering the Version Insight uh, technologies inside Red Studio XE. Version Insight is a feature added in Red Studio XE that allows really deep IDE integration of version control systems. Um, there's two pieces to it, I guess. First, there is an open API so that you can integrate pretty much any version control system uh, into the IDE. The second part of it is that we've implemented that API for subversion. Um, so out of the box you can start using all of the capabilities that I'm about to show you against subversion but already um, there are efforts going on in the community to implement the same API for other version control systems uh, and to that end we've actually open sourced our subversion implementation of the version insight APIs um, to provide both a starting point and, and, a, and a fairly real world example of how you would implement the version insight APIs. So in part one in this first video I want to show um, basically getting started taking a brand new project and adding it into the uh, repository for the first time and then a bit of a tour of the um, various productivity tools inside the IDE related to your um, uh, version control repository. The first thing that I'd like to show inside Version Insight is adding a brand new project into a repository for the first time. So let's um, create an empty VCL project. I'll save this somewhere. I think I have a directory. And I'll use the default naming, which I'll come back to in a moment. So unit14.paz and project12.dproj. Okay, so we've got a brand new project. To add that into a, a, a subversion repository for the first time, uh, if you come to the project manager, right click on the project file, you'll have an option for add to version control. So if I select that, um, you can see that Version Insight has figured out which files are. Uh, source files and as such need to be versioned. Um, it'll ignore files that are um, generated from source files. So for example, it will ignore DCU files, that sort of thing, because you don't need to uh, version those if you're versioning the PAS and the DFM. So it's figured that out. Um, I need to tell it the, the URL of my repository. Um, I have a local one here that I'll call SVN test uh, and I need to give it an initial comment. Once I've done that, if I click import, we should get taken back to our form, but down in our message view, we should see that we now have a subversion uh, tab, uh, and we can see it's put in an entry for each of those files as it's added it to the version control, uh, and we've got, uh, it's completed that initial commit at revision two. So our project is now in the version control system. Now, before we go off and have a look at um, a bunch of the features inside the IDE uh, related to Version Insight, let me just make a couple of changes and do another commit into the repository so we've got a couple of revisions. So let's make some changes to the UI. I'll add an edit box and a button and let's lay these out vaguely neatly. Here we go a little closer. Sorry. I'm a little obsessive about that probably. Uh, so there's my fantastic UI. Uh, let's save that locally. Now when I want to update those changes into the um, repository. There's a few ways you can do it actually. You can right click on the individual file. Uh, if you know you just want to check in one um, one file, uh, you can right click that and come down to the subversion menu option. Uh, and do a commit. Um, but if you've potentially changed a few um, files inside your project, you can click on the project node, uh, come down to the subversion men menu, do a commit. Um, either, you've got a few options. Just the changed files in this project. Um, uh, the chain, you want to commit changes uh, for the entire project directory or for the entire repository. 
Uh, so in this case I'll just say uh, from project directory, uh, you can see it's figured out that there's um, only one modified file. Um, we've got a few options down the bottom here though. Um, I can get it to show me any unversioned files. So for example, let's say since the last check-in maybe I've added an additional form to my project. Well, those, that the PAS and the DFM file for that form won't yet be in the repository and therefore they're unversioned. So I could select this uh, to show me any unversioned files, uh, then check those and add them into the repository at the same time as part of the same uh, commit. I can also get it to show me uh, references to external subversion repositories using this show externals option. But I'll stick with just these two. Let me add a comment. Um, uh, oh, and of course it wouldn't be a uh, version control check-in comment if it was all spelt correctly so I'm going to leave that um, as how it should be. So I've put my comment in, let me do a commit, again we get our subversion tab in our message view showing me that we've now compl completed that commit at revision 3. Now what I want to do is have a look at some of the um, tools available inside the IDE for interacting with your repository. Now it depends at what level you want to look. Um, if you want to get an overall view of the changes that have been happening inside your repository, uh, one thing that you can do is if you come over to your project, go down to the subversion um, uh, menu and come down uh, and say show the log either from the for the entire repository or just for our project directory. At that point we'll get to see all of the revisions that have happened, whether we've done them or someone else. Um, we can go through and f if we select each of them we can see which files were touched as part of that um, uh, revision, any comment that was there. So it gives you a good overall view of what's been changing inside your your uh, repository. The other thing that we can do is actually browse the repository. So if we come down here, go to browse repository again, either the entire repository or just narrowed down to our project directory, um, we can specify a particular revision. I'll leave it at head. If I load that up, we can see all of the files inside our repository, the date that they were last changed, who changed them, uh, the revision number that they were last part of, etc. So that can be useful as well, but What's probably more useful um, in during the development process uh, is being able to look at the history uh, of changes and do diffs, for example, for a particular file. So here I think Version Inside uh, has a really cool feature in that it integrates into the history view inside Delphi and CBuilder. Um, the history view has been there for a number of versions, uh, but until recently has shown only the um, the local history, so locally saved versions of the files. Every time you click save, it'll stick a, a copy of that off into a history subdirectory, and so the history view has allowed you to browse through those local um, revisions. It, it still does that, but it also now um, is integrated into Version Insight, so it interleaves in amongst those local versions any server-side versions as well. So if we come over to the history tab, for this file. Um, we can see uh, the green uh, entries here are the local backups, as it says. Um, so this is a locally stored version. Um, revision 2 here you can see and revision 3 here reflect my revisions inside the version control, um, inside subversion. Um, so you can click on those, you can see if you hover over them you can see the comment uh, the, t the who did the check-in, the time and the comment that they, they applied. Uh, you can also see the current file and the current buffer. Um, information tab again gives you, lets you scroll through those as well. The diff view is probably the most um, interesting one I think, uh, which lets you, let me just sort by revision, um, lets you do diffs between for example revision 3 and revision 2 here. Um, so we can see the changes that were made both in the PAS file but also if I come across here, if this is a PAS DFM pair, I can flip across and also see the same changes in um, 
between three and two, for example, in um, my DFM file, so we can see what's changed in there. Also, one other thing in here, or well, there's a couple of other things, but one other thing that I'll show right now. Um, if you've got a, an external diff tool and merge tool that you like to use, um, we've provided support for integrating that in as well. So, um, for example, if I want to look at the difference between revision 3 and revision 2, um, but I want to view it inside Beyond Compare, we can come up here and uh, drop down uh, this little option and any external tools that you have configured um, will show up here out of the box we ship a, a, a version of Beyond Compare uh, and that's pre-configured in that list so if you've got Delphi or CBuilder XE you'll have a copy of Beyond Compare um, but if I select Beyond Compare it'll bring up those two revisions uh, inside uh, inside its diff view and then if you like using Beyond Compare then you know what to do from this point